In this video, we're going to discuss the accounting for convertible debt, a potentially dilutive security. Convertible bonds can be changed into another corporate security, typically common stock, during some specified period of time after the convertible debt was issued. From the bondholder's perspective, the benefit of a convertible bond is that we get the guaranteed principal and interest, that is, if the company doesn't default. Plus, we get the added benefit of being able to exchange it for stock. In other words, we have an upside, something more than the par value of our bonds at maturity. Think about being a bondholder for Tesla. There's a lot of downside risk there. And as a bondholder, you don't share in that tremendous upside potential. However, if you are a convertible bondholder, you get the benefits of being paid first in the event of financial distress, and you've got that guaranteed coupon payment, at least as long as Tesla remains in business. But you also have a chance for that tremendous upside potential. From Tesla's perspective, there are benefits to the corporation as well. The first primary benefit that we can talk about is that they can get to raise essentially what's somewhat of an equity stake without giving up ownership control today. In other words, debt doesn't have any voting rights. So Elon Musk doesn't have to dilute his voting interest by issuing convertible debt. And second, and probably equally or perhaps more important, is the debt financing can be obtained at cheaper rates. You're willing to accept a much lower yield on convertible bonds that you know have potential upside than you are on straight debt. Would you really want to lend money to Tesla at 5% interest rate, knowing that they could very easily go bankrupt and you have no upside potential? From an accounting perspective, we're going to need to talk about issuing of convertible debt, how we account for conversion of convertible debt, as well as the retirement of convertible debt. First, at the time of issue, it's very simple. Convertible bonds are recorded just like straight debt issues, um, and any premium or discount is amortized over the term of the debt. We don't recognize under GAAP any equity component associated with convertible debt. That's different than the global view. Under IFRS, the issuer of convertible debt needs to record separately the liability and equity components of that security. At the time of conversion, that is, if the bonds are converted to common stock, the companies will use the book value method when converting the bonds. Um, the issuing company won't recognize any gain or loss upon conversion. They will simply remove the bond payable along with any unamortized premium or discount and record the common stock at par along with additional paid in capital. Let's take a look at an example. Hilton has a $1,000 bond that's convertible into 10 shares of common stock with a $10 par value. At the time of the conversion, the unamortized premium is 50, and we would record the conversion of the bonds as follows. First, we would debit bonds payable and the premium on bonds payable to remove the debt from our books. Then, of course, we record the common stock at par, 10 shares at $10 per share par value, and the difference gets plugged to additional paid in capital. The next issue we'll talk about is what we refer to as an induced conversion. This is when the issuer wants to encourage a more prompt conversion that the convertible debt holders might otherwise undertake. In other words, we want to quit making um, coupon payments to the debt holders, and we would like them to exchange their debt for shares of common stock. In order to do that, we often have to offer a sweetener, a little something extra. In other words, we're going to pay them some additional cash to induce that conversion. Any cash or sweetener that we give the convertible debt holders is recorded as an expense in the current period. Let's take a look at a quick example. So we've got the Helloid Corporation has bonds outstanding and Normally, if the bonds were converted, we remove the bonds payable from the books, along with any unamortized premium or discount. We record common stock and additional paid in capital. In order to induce our bondholders to convert today, though, we've offered to pay them an additional $80,000 in cash. That simply becomes a credit to cash for $80,000 and recorded as a debt conversion expense in the current period. 
Now, if the bondholders don't convert to common stock, well, then we're simply going to have a normal debt convert, rather a debt retirement. And in that normal debt retirement, we account for it the same as retiring debt that's not convertible. Any difference between our acquisition price and the carrying amount of that debt will be reported as a gain or loss on the income statement. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. We're told that the Larkspur Corporation has 2,200 bonds outstanding with a $1,000 par value and that they were issued at 95. Each bond is convertible into 50 shares of $10 par value common stock. The bonds are converted on December 31st, 2021 when the unamortized discount is $34,400 and the market price of the stock is $21 per share. The market price of the stock doesn't matter to the corporation. Of course, it does matter to the bondholders. They won't convert their debt unless they receive more in equity than they give up in terms of par value of their bonds. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, issue, the entries we would have made when the bonds were issued. The bonds were issued at 95, so we are going to receive the 2,200 bonds times $1,000 par value times 0.95. We're going to get um, $2,090,000 in cash. Of course, like always, we record bonds at their face value, so the full $2,200,000. And the difference, of course, is debited to the discount on bonds payable. Now, we're told that they are converted when the unamortized discount is 34400 So what do we need to do? We need to remove the bonds payable from our books as well as any remaining unamortized discount. We debit bonds payable for $220,000. We credit the discount on bonds payable for 34400 That was the remaining unamortized discount. And, of course, we credit common stock for the number of shares issued, which is the 2,200 bonds, and they're convertible into 50 um, shares per bond, and our par value is $10 per share, so $1,100. And then the difference is our plug to additional paid in capital. Now let's assume that there was an additional $75,000 paid to induce the conversion of the bonds. The first thing we have to remember is that the normal journal entry is exactly the same thing, except we're going to add cash and then a debt conversion expense. So again, compare the entry for the actual retirement of the bonds, same as the one prior to it but we also have the additional credit to cash and our $75,000 in debt conversion expense.